Okay, let's run these tests, see what we get. I'm going to hit Control F5, let it build. It's probably going to take a minute. I'm going to build it offline. Okay, here we go. Tests are running. And uh, notice that they're not going very fast. And the reason why, if you remember, we said give us a random number of tests, and then for each test, sleep anywhere from 0 to 10 seconds each. So that could that could take a while. This is going to run in the background, and which is fine. If it's a test we've built to run overnight, then... Great, let it build and run, but uh, otherwise, I'm wasting my time right now, and time is money, especially to the company that I'm working for, so I don't want to sit here and just watch this thing stare at me, and hopefully I've calculated if we've our max, if we do 110 tests, 10 seconds each, that's, that's going to be upwards of 20 minutes or so, so I don't want to waste that much of my own time, let alone the company's paying my salary kind of time, so definitely not useful for for me sitting here, but overnight, you want to let the test run overnight, this is just dandy, go ahead and let it do it. Uh, let me show you how to speed this up a little bit. First of all, it looks like we may be hung. Alright, we might be in an infinite loop, who knows, I don't know what's going on, my tests aren't reporting anything to me. So, I know I'm in frame time measuring tests, the Google test nicely output that to me, but, but code, we're just cranking in here and we're not really showing the console what's going on, so I want to change that up, I'm going to control C out of this. And just in here, Q debug. Let's just do a dot. All right, we're gonna output a dot. Let me control F5, run this again. And binary it doesn't no acceptable no operator found takes left hand type of Q debug or there's no use of undefined type. That's a better error. So I don't know what Q debug is. Did we not pound include Q debug in here? Qt slash Q debug. Okay, control minus to jump back to where we were. Editing, control minus again, we go down here. Alright, uh, control F5, run that. Oh, linker errors. Okay, by now you should know <laughs> how to fix this. Let's uh, let's go properties. I'm going to do this actually offline, not take up your time. You should be used to bringing in the libs and the DLLs. Okay, so I got, I got that working now. You see we get the dots. Every time a new test run, we're getting a random number of sleeps. So we're getting the dots, and I actually wanted these to go across the screen, not down the screen, but I forgot that QDebug actually inserts a new line for you. A couple ways I could fix that, I could just do a typical C out, I think that's what I'll do, is just do a C out. Let's change this up, pound include IO stream using STD C out, control minus to jump back here. And STD C out, control F5, run that again. And note though that we are getting the dots. And the dots, I mean, they're going by, they're indicating this loop's going. It's just so it turns out that this loop, if we randomly selected 110 seconds or even, or 110 iterations or even 10 iterations, this is going to take a while. All right, I don't want to sit here for all this. So let's, let's speed this up. But notice we're not getting any errors. All right, and a lot of this has to do with our threshold, which a threshold of point 0.1, where is that threshold? A threshold of point 0.1, again, that's that's a lot of threshold. We're giving a lot of leeway here for these floating point values to be wrong, but still we're meeting the right areas of time. All right? Generally the the times are working out. Even though we have a large threshold, we're hitting roughly right into where we should be. So that must make me feel good. Our our tests are passing. We went from red to green. We used test driven development to get this going. Awesome. But I want to see how tight can I get this threshold before we start failing these tests. So let's go here and let's bring the threshold down to well zero. Let's start with zero. I I should be getting errors with a threshold of zero. Let's just bring that up and see what we get. There we go. Sure enough, it aired out. The threshold was too tight. So, so uh, let's go a little bigger with our threshold than zero. Let's do z z z z one. All right, maybe that'll work. Control F five, build that, run that, let it run. I'll pause the video, and we can see that threshold is way too tight. So let's make it a little bit bigger. Take off two zeros here. Control F five, let that run. See the see what happens with our results. And obviously that threshold's not good either. But you see how I'm kind of doing this. This it's a little bit brute force-ish, but I'm trying to find a good number in here that I can feel comfortable about, and will still let my my tests pass. So let, I'm just going to work this a little bit offline and find a good number without boring you with all the details. 
So I've had this threshold of 0 0.001 running, and it looks like I'm passing a few tests. Ideally, I'd let this go a day or two and see if that passes. Um, but I didn't pass. I didn't test 0 0.0001. I skipped straight to 0 0.001 because I'm I'm trying to get, take off larger chunks or do a binary search. Say let's let's find the general area where I can take off zeros or add zeros. And right now I'm feeling okay that this is all right. Let's. I'm gonna though offline. I'm gonna add another zero here and just see. See what that does. So you can see here, adding another zero, I eventually erred out after one, two, three, four, five tests. I had one error. So you may think I'm going to just bump this to there and be happy with it, but there may be a chance if I let this run all night that this test will fail because of that. And ideally, all my tests, if I let them run all night, and we're going to get a lot of tests in the background here. If I let them run, I want to be able to come back in the morning and, sit and see a nice clean sheet. And I don't want this test kind of going. Well, sometimes I pass and sometimes I fail. It just depends on how the bits work out for that night. So I'm actually going to decrease or increase my threshold to 0 0.01 and leave it right there. I I know if if I if I draw a random card and say it has to be about 8.6 seconds, and it's pretty close to 8.6 seconds, I'm going to feel good about it. All right, if it's 0 0.01 within 8.6 seconds for that time iteration. I'm okay. And remember, we're, we're testing these tests against Q time and Q sleep, and we're not guaranteed with sleeping on a processor that we're going to get a perfect amount of time. So I'm okay with this. I'm comfortable with this. And I think this will give us the least amount of failures, but still um, test, test our code appropriately. So I'm feeling good about that. Our tests are running. They're passing. I, I think tonight I'll, I'll set this to run maybe 100 times and see what I get in the morning. But for now... I think we're good, and uh, we'll go from there. So I'm going to commit this code to my repository, and we're going to move on.